Hey, this is uh, for economics. It's April 1st. Let me begin by letting you know that you're going to need your textbook. You're going to need your economics textbook. So if it's at um, school, if uh, you need someone to drop it off, if you need to pick it up, please make sure you let us know. You need your textbook in order to complete this chapter. Once again, you need to make sure that you have your textbook. So this is from chapter seven. And in chapter seven, it's going to uh, give us a brief summary about what it is to own a business and what the importance of it and how to go about when it comes to business ownership. So you're gonna see a couple of terms like sole proprietor, which means that you solely own by yourself the particular company. Sometimes you'll see something like a partnership, which means that you are in a partnership with another individual or individuals. Then you'll see something called a corporation, and a corporation is uh, pretty interesting in economics because it is a separate entity, it is a separate uh, individual when it comes to the law. So a corporation means a person or a group of individuals have decided to incorporate themselves. And what that means is they are separate from their business. So although they are the individuals creating and owning the business, the business itself, according to the law, stands on its own. So the business has, by law, the opportunity or the right to buy, to sell, to own property, and uh, to sue, to be sued, and so forth. So it's its own corporation. So sometimes you'll see, like, for example, the one in the book is called Universal Widgets. And if you were to see the name of Universal Widgets, you would see Universal Widgets Inc., I-N-C, which means incorporated. It is its own entity according to the law. So Universal Widgets could own property. Universal Widgets could be sued. It can sue. It can buy and sell under the law, which is pretty neat. That's what it means to be incorporated. I'm going to put all of these notes on the website as well for you guys sometime soon. As with uh, any individual, according to the law, you have to pay taxes when you have income. So also the corporation itself has to pay taxes. So what we see up here on the board are the steps in order to determine and to calculate how much taxes the corporation itself has to pay. So just like I already mentioned, any individual who has some amount of income, the corporation itself, because it stands on its own, has to pay taxes to the government as well. So you're going to see this on the papers that I'll send home for you. Uh, you're gonna see the individual steps. They're a little bit lengthier on the piece of paper, so I decided to uh, condense them for you and explain them in some detail for you to be able to understand. So this is from chapter seven once again. You're going to need your textbook. Send the papers home, you'll see some of these steps, and then you'll work on some of these problems. So what's going on here is we have five different steps. And in order for you to understand this, you're going to have to have the tax bracket in front of you. That is on the papers that I will hand to you or will be sent home to you. So please make sure you have the tax bracket in front of you. You're going to see separate sections. At the top, it'll say corporate tax rates. And you're going to determine based on that how much taxes this corporation has to pay, this company that stands by itself. You're going to see two sides to it. You can see the income side and then the liability. Once again, the left side is for income, the right side is the liability. The left side is gonna tell us how much the corporation made and how much of what they made they have to pay taxes on. That's your left side. Your right side is going to tell us the liability, how that is calculated. So once again, you're gonna have the income and the liability side. It's pretty simple. If you have the tax bracket in front of you, you're gonna see that once again on the piece of paper I've handed to you. Uh, the tax bracket is going to say over this amount, but not over this amount. Over, but not over. You're gonna find the amount based on the bracket. So for example, the problem that I've created, this particular corporation, once again, is Universal Widgets. They made an income $65,000 this past year. $65,000 the corporation made. So when you try to locate this on your bracket, you're going to look at over, but not over. So for example, let me read the bracket. The first section says over $0, but not over $50,000. Over zero, but not over 50,000. Now this is 65,000, remember, that's the amount that they made. So 65,000 is over $0, obviously, but it's not over 50,000. 
or it is over 50,000, excuse me. It is over 50,000, but it doesn't fit in that bracket. It's over zero, but it's also over 50. The bracket is only from zero to 50, zero to 50, so it doesn't fit there. It's over that amount, so that's not part of that bracket. My second bracket would say over 50, but not over 75. Over 50, but not over 75. So my second bracket is from 50 to 75,000. 50,000 to 75,000. 65,000, of course, fits right in there. It's over 50, but it's, also, it's between 50,000 and 75,000. So 65,000 fits within that bracket. So I'm going to choose that one. So again, my first step is to find the tax bracket. This is for corporate taxes, once again. Your tax bracket is the second one that says over 50,000, but not over 75,000. It fits between 50,000 and 75. Once you've found that bracket, you can go over to step number two. Step number two says find the minimum tax rate. That's very simple. Once you've located your tax bracket, which is the second one right next to it, on the liability side, you're going to have an amount where it says calculation. There's an amount right there, right where it says calculation. I'm looking at it, it says $7,500, $7,500. This is the minimum tax. Doesn't matter what circumstance, situation, uh, and finances they are, this is the minimum they have to pay based on their income. This is the minimum that they have to pay, no matter what, 7,500. You have to locate that, that is fine minimum tax. Step number two, that is right there under calculation. Once you've located your tax bracket, which is step number one, you're gonna locate that right next to it, 7,500. Once again, if you're following along with the bracket, once you see it, this will uh, make a lot more sense because you can see it right next to it. So this is uh, step number one. Once again, you find your tax bracket based on which one does it fit in between. Step number two, right next to it, you're gonna have the minimum tax under calculation. Step number three, it says determine the amount of taxable income in excess. Excess means extra, and in order to calculate something that is extra, you're going to have to subtract. Where it says excess, you're going to subtract. So step number three involves subtraction. What you're going to do is you're going to take your original amount, your original amount that they made, which in this instance was $65,000, $65,000, and you're going to look at the minimum of the bracket. So once again, remember our second bracket was from 50,000 to 75,000, 50,000 to 75,000. My minimum amount, the lesser amount is 50,000. Take your original amount and subtract your minimum amount from the bracket, 65,000 minus 50,000. Once again, your original amount that you started off with in step number one, once you found the bracket, and then subtract the minimum amount of that bracket. So 65,000 minus 50,000 is going to give me 15,000, 15,000. This number is important in step number three because you're gonna use it again for step number four. Once again, make sure you uh, note down that number you're following these steps exactly. So take the original amount, subtract the minimum amount from the bracket, you're gonna get 15,000. Find your tax bracket, once you find your tax bracket, you're going to uh, calculate the minimum amount that you have to pay. Once you've done that, take your original amount, the minimum amount from that bracket, and then once you have that number, you can move on to step number four. So you can see step number four, it says multiply brackets tax rate by the amount from step number three. So remember the amount from step number three, which is 15,000, you bring it down, 15,000, then right there again, where it says calculation, where you saw your 7,500, right next to that number, you're going to see a percentage. So I'm looking at it, my second bracket says 7,500, and right next to it, it has 25%. So you can see step number four, 25%, you're going to multiply that by the amount you have from step number three. So I'm going to convert 25% to a decimal because it's easier to multiply that way. So 25% is also 0.25. So I'm going to multiply 0.25 by 15,000, which is from step number three. Again, my percentage that is right next to it in calculation, you're going to multiply that by 15,000, step number three. I'm going to get 3,700 
and 50, 3,750. That is the extra amount of taxes that they have to pay. So step number four is important in order to move to step number five, which you'll see here in a second. So once again, step number four is the excess taxes they have to pay. This is the minimum, this is the excess. So they're gonna have to essentially pay both of these amounts combined. So let me go again from the beginning. Step number one, find the tax bracket. It'll say over 50,000, but not over 75,000. This fits in between. Notice that you'll have different amounts. For example, the first problem you'll have to solve starts off with only a thousand. So you're probably going to use your first bracket where it says over zero, but not over 50,000. So it fits right there, so you use a different bracket. It has a different percentage and so forth. Once you find your bracket, you're gonna find the minimum tax. Right underneath where it says calculation, there's going to be a number for that bracket. In this instance, it is 7,500. Once you find the minimum tax, you're gonna find the exit. So you're gonna go back to number one, the original amount that you had, subtract the minimum from the bracket. My bracket, once again, says 50,000. Uh, to 75,000, 50,000 being the minimum amount, subtract them, that gives you 15,000. Step number four, you're gonna multiply the tax rate by amount from step number three, you yeah, have 15,000 from step number three. My percentage, once again, is found under calculation on your bracket, 25% by 15,000 is going to give me 3,750. Final step, step number five, you're gonna take step number two, which is the minimum tax, and you're gonna add it to step number four, your excess tax. So you're gonna uh, add 7,500 to 3,750. You're gonna add both of those, as you can see right there, and that is 11,700, uh, excuse me, $11,250. Uh, that is called your total tax liability. Total tax liability. They are liable, they are required by law to pay this as a corporation. You're gonna add steps two and four, going to give me $11,250. You're going to have several problems to work on this. The steps are exactly the same on all of them. The only thing that will change is your original amount. You're going to have to find the bracket. Once you found the bracket, the rest of, of the problem itself is very smooth. You're going to be able to calculate it very easy. You just need to practice this. You'll have a quiz at the end of the lesson. Once again, at the end of the week when we finish the entire lesson. Please make sure you understand this, you reach out if you have any questions, you will need to have your textbook in order to continue on with the other part of the lesson. This is only the beginning in order to understand the rest of the lesson. This is corporate taxes. These are taxes that a corporation, an uh, individual or group of individuals have incorporated themselves. They have separated themselves from the company itself and the company itself has its own legal name and its own legal standing. And these are taxes.